Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, February 19th, 2016. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Bucknuts contributor Jonah Booker. Jay Book, how are things in the Valley of the Sun this morning? Can't complain at all. Beautiful. It's a little hot. Summer's already hit us. Hit about 90 degrees the other day. So uh, forget springtime. Thought I was going to enjoy some, some nice weather for spring training, but it looks like you're going to have to throw in the sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> Good problems to have. Last time you and I talked, it was snowing here in Columbus. Well, it's going to be sunny and in the 50s the next few days. So I'm doing well, to say the least. Spring is here in the capital city of Ohio, at least we can hope. We still have a few months till summer, but we'll take spring here in late February here in Columbus. Jonah, I had a chance to interview Ohio State strength and conditioning coach Mickey Marotti on Wednesday along with a lot of the local Columbus media, and he talked up several players. He praised... A lot of the returning starters, such as J.T. Barrett, Pat Elfly, and Billy Price, Tyquan Lewis, Raekwon McMillan, and Gary on Conley. So really, all of the returning starters. He even talked up Cam Johnston. Um, you know, and that was expected. He's going to talk up the few returning starters that they have. What I really found interesting, Jonah, was the non-returning starters that Coach Marotti singled out, and they included Dontre Wilson, Briante Dunn, Demetrius Knox, Jamarco Jones, Evan Lyle, Sam Hubbard. Jalen Holmes, Dante Booker, and Malik Hooker. Let's take the offensive guys first and then move to the defense. Jay Book, your thoughts on Marotti giving glowing reports for Wilson, Dunn, Knox, Jones, and Lyle? I would say out of that offensive group, the one that really stood out to me was Briante Dunn. Everybody was thinking that this uh, running back position is going to be Mike Weber's. But, hey, Briante Dunn has something to say about that. You're talking about a fifth-year guy, a former five-star. He's finally going to get his shot. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. From all indications, it's looking like Dunn has really matured. He's really got his head on, head on straight. He's laser-focused in the weight room, and he's doing all the things that you need a guy like Dunn to do in order to uh, put himself in contention for that starting spot. And then the big thing is since Dontre Wilson is back in action as far as running, as uh, Coach Mick said, he's on the track team with James Clark. Um, they told him they can go ahead and do that after m- many setbacks from that foot. I'm actually surprised that they're allowing him to go out there and run track. But, hey, if he's healthy, let's do it. And then in the offensive line, you're talking about a couple guys who's really going to provide some solid debt as well as, um, push for starting in uh, Demetrius Knox, Jim Jones, and Lyles. A lot of people think that the interior positions will be uh, Demetrius Knox and maybe Matthew Burrell, but, hey, if you've got a guy in Evan Lyles that's coming on strong, I'll take that all day, every day, because it's just providing debt, um, uh, some, some debt around, amongst that offensive line there. Yeah, and those wondering about Jamarco Jones, because we've had a lot of talk that he – might move inside to guard, and that still might happen. But just to be clear, right now, Jamarco Jones is playing right tackle. He will start the spring off as a starting right tackle. Keep in mind, Malcolm Pridgen is not here yet, will not be here till June. So talking to JT Barrett on Wednesday, he says that right now Jamarco Jones is the starting right tackle. We'll see what happens. You know, if he's not the starting right tackle, maybe he'll be the starting right guard. Maybe he'll be a super sub. But uh, that's the latest on Jamarco Jones. And Jay Book, now let's look at the defensive guys. Not a surprise to hear Marotti talk up Hubbard, who actually started two games last year, the season opener and the season finale. But it was very encouraging to hear Marotti praise specifically Holmes, Booker, and Hooker. So for me, um, Jalen Holmes is a guy that really stood out because he came in with all the hype. And if you watch Holmes, one thing that he needed to work on is getting stronger in the weight room because he struggled really engaging blocks. Um, he had one rush, which, which was the speed rush, getting up field. But the thing that really separated Joey Bosa amongst the others was how strong he was at the point of attack when he was able to use his hand, shed blocks. Hubbard, he's a guy, as well as Mike Hill, that we had in the boarding house that NFL scouts are already saying, 
hey, look out for these two. If they have a, another big year, these are two guys that could potentially make a jump to the NFL early. Hubbard, a freshman All-American, he has to lean. He's another guy that really needs to get stronger in the weight room, but uh, those are that defensive line has the potential to be pretty solid. And then you also throw in a guy in Dante Booker who's dripping in talent. Uh, he, he's kind of raw, but with him getting in that weight room and developing that killer mentality that Darren Lee had, the sky's the limit for Dante Booker playing him right next to Raekwon Miller, who's going to be an All-American this year. I asked JT Barrett about the returning wide receivers when we chatted with him on Wednesday, and JT is most excited about Noah Brown and Corey Smith. You can just tell from talking to him the way his eyes light up, just the words that come out of his mouth when he talks about Noah Brown and Corey Smith. He said, quote, they'll both be huge parts of the offense this year. Joe, I know they are both coming off serious injuries, broken leg for Brown, torn ACL for Smith. I'm actually more worried about Smith than Brown. I think it's much easier to come back from a broken leg than a torn ACL, not that either of them are good. Uh, but it's really good to hear Baird is bullish on both of those guys. And he mentioned several other receivers as well, such as Torrance Gibson, Terry McLaurin, Paris Campbell, who will likely play some H, and also Austin Mack, who's going to play as a true freshman for sure unless something drastic happens. But Barrett seemed to indicate Brown and Smith would be the starting wideouts. Your thoughts on that, Jonah? I think those would be your starting wideouts. The one thing um, that Coach Mick touched on was making sure that they get those guys back on track. Because right now they're not actually doing everything that the other guys. Obviously they're still rehabbing, but they're running in the pool. Um, but seeing how these guys react once they're back on the surface going full speed is going to be interesting. I don't think you're not going to see them do very much in the springtime. They're going to continue to rehab. But Noah Brown was looking like a beast in uh, fall camp last year. He was looking like he was going to be a big-time primetime player for the wide receivers. But you can't understate the, the experience that Noah Brown and Corey Smith is going to bring to the table for a young wide receiving core that's lack game reps. So just having those guys in the wide receiving room is definitely going to help those guys because they're going to be able to lean on those two as well as Dontre Wilson. And then you touched on a couple of the younger guys as well as Austin Mack and Torrance Gibson. I'm really excited to see what Torrance Gibson is going to do. The battle for that X spot is going to be something special because Austin Mack has some dog in him. He's going to go out there and he's going to compete. And then you have a guy in Torrance Gibson who's learning position. But, man, the, the sky is the limit when you're talking about potential with Torrance Gibson. You're talking about a 6'4", 6'5", guy that can run, got that Randy Moss-type frame that can pop the top off a of defense. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do. The younger guys, uh, Paris Campbell, he's going to be in the rotation Terry McClure, they've been talking about him for the last couple of years, so I want to see him uh, put together a good spring because the talent is coming in. The last thing you want to do is uh, get over-recruited the way Urban Meyer is bringing these studs in, but it's promising as far as the wide receiver groups. They're young but very talented. Jonah, you're a former college football player. You played defensive back at Ohio University. You know, we're told that Eric Glover-Williams has moved from corner to safety Glover Williams is only listed at five foot nine, 180 pounds. Maybe he's bigger than that now as far as weight wise. And we know he keeps packs a punch. There's no doubt about that. It's not about that. But, you know, what's your take on this move? Any concerns or do you think this is a good fit for EGW? The last time we had talked, I had my reservations in regards to moving EGW there because he is on the shorter side as far as five nine. But one thing you cannot measure about EGW is his heart and his competitive drive. You saw him out there on Friday Night Lights when he was out there competing on every single pass play on offense and defense. This is a guy, he's another one that comes in with a lot of bite to him as a young pup. So they're going to move, they're saying they're going to move him to safety. And if, if he's one of those guys um, that can really master his technique, Dave, you may be looking at somebody in the mold of maybe a, a Honey Badger, a 5'9 safety, or a Bob Sanders, or a LaMarcus Joyner, guys that are around EGW size, they play bigger than what they really are. So let's see what he can do. It's definitely going to be a transition from him uh, at high school at Canton. He was playing a lot of the corner, then he also played a lot on uh, – 
wide receiver, quarterback, wherever they need him to play. So it's definitely going to be a transition. But I'm concerned about the safety position. We had it in the boarding house earlier this week that, you know, that's a concern potentially with the staff. You got Malik Hooker who's coming in that they say is very talented, but he came in very raw. He was more of a basketball guy, and he really didn't have that head-hunting type of mentality that you wanted from a safety and you have Cam Burrows and Eric Smith that are both coming off injury. So it's going to be huge to see the development. Um, the, the new coach we brought in there, uh, Shiano, he's definitely going to have his work cut out for him. Let's see what he's made of because he's really going to have to get these guys playing at a high level uh, by the time Ohio State hits the road to Norman, Oklahoma. Great insights from Jonah Booker, as usual. Thank you, Jay Book. You can catch his column every week on Bucknuts. It is outside Columbus. Also, thanks to the listeners. I hope you guys have a great day and a great weekend. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Bye.